Hey guys, welcome to episode one of Origins of Doggos. I came up with this idea when I was doing videos for Esper and I realized the history of dog breeds is something that is really amazing and something I was very passionate about. Um, so I wanted to do a series of videos where I go through the dog breeds A through Z, these are AKC breeds, and I talk about where they came from from a historical perspective. It's it's amazing the events that surround this. So first episode, we're gonna be talking about the Offenpinscher. This is a toy breed dog. It is considered one of the oldest toy breed, if not the oldest toy breed dog. They are nine and a half to 11 inches in length, and they are seven to 10 pounds. What's amazing is the humble beginnings of this dog was as a rat catcher in farms, and it would end up becoming the highlight of the social elite in the 1940s and and actually has been photographed with the hope diamond around its neck so let's get through and talk about how this happened let's go way back switzerland in the 1850s there's a huge archaeological discovery um, it it shows dogs dating back to 3000 bc it shows the historic history of the predecessors that led to pretty much all the dogs that spread throughout europe including the schnauzers and all the pinchers and all that stuff so here we go, we get to see trace the timeline of what happened. So they started developing these smaller dogs for farms as rat catchers, not guard dogs, but as alarm dogs. Uh, they started breeding off into two different segments. One was a little longer nose, a little larger, those would become your schnauzers, and one was a little slub, snub nose, and a little shorter, and that would become your often pincher. Often pincher means often, ape, and pincher, which is an etymology kind of means dog. So as you can see, they are hilariously apish looking. <laughs> and I cannot help but think of that Persian cat meme like this, the guy in the chair. Absolutely hilarious. So the written record of them doesn't show up until the 1900s, but they believe they've been around, they were around in Germany since the 1500s. So this is a really old dog breed. And you can see it was kind of the, you know, he, they were bred for a purpose. They needed them on farms. They needed them as rat catchers and pest control. They used them as, as alarm dogs. You know, these this was a very, this wasn't the dog of the elite. This was a, this was a dog that would live on the farm. It was a peasant's dog, which is which is awesome. It's so cool to see how these things have different pur uh, different dogs have different purposes as you move through time. So it wasn't until the written record in the 19th century, uh, and the dog didn't actually come to America until in 1935. Until 1935, but it did gain popularity in Europe right around the World Wars. Obviously, fell out of favor being a German dog after World War II. But, so coming over to America in 1935 was a woman named Miss Bessie Malley of Cicero, Illinois. She founded the Zwartgiffel, or Dwarf Devil Kennel. <laughs> There's not a lot of history about this woman, but she was the one that originally brought over the Offenpinscher. And you can imagine, like America, we love a rare thing. So this was a rare dog breed. And it started to get a little bit more, um, a little bit more, popular as this this rarity kind of spread through you know through america you can imagine this woman though she had to import dogs from germany to america in the 30s i don't think that was very easy in fact it's crazy i would love to have met this woman and understand her passion about this so the breed comes over 1935 the akc at the time didn't have any protocol for emitting new dog breeds they kind of said oh we got everything but in 1936, they allowed the often pincher to, to come into the AKC. And so part of the reason is because they had some high profile supporters. This is start where we get it gets crazy. So coming from a farm in Germany, coming over to America, obscure rarity, cute looking ape dog, suddenly now some of the, the highest social elites start taking an interest. The most important one was Evelyn Walsh McLean. Uh, so Evelyn Walsh McLean was a mining heiress. She was everything you would imagine in the 1930s and 40s of being just stupid wealthy and just the social elite. And it's just amazing. She she actually come to own the Hope Diamond at one point in time. She collected all different sorts of crazy rare, rare breeds of time. Poodles, St. Bernards, Great Danes, Silky Characters, Chihuahuas, Brussels Griffons, which are actually a little bit related to the Offen Pinchers. So there are photographs, and I'm going to put them up here, of often pinchers with the hope diamond I, I mean it's just it's that i would love for somebody to make a movie about this because it's you know going from this this crazy humble beginnings to to this like 
paradigm of even before social media being all over the newspapers, all over paparazzi, that sort of thing. So you can imagine, you know, after the war and, um, you know, the sentiment toward Germany was not the best. <laughs> and you would think that this, this, this breed might die out or might go away. But the crazy little obstinate, cute personality of this dog sunk its way into the American hearts and German stock of the dogs kept coming over even after the war. So it's a testament to the dog's personality and I would love to meet one. Um, you know, that's that's what I want to do with these videos is hopefully if they get popular, we can redo this entire series and I can sit down with each breed and we can do the same sort of thing and talk about them um, as we go through. Uh, but yeah, it just it's just so fascinating to think and um, I hope you guys enjoyed the pictures and that sort of thing. Just a brief historical shop, snapshot of the Offen Pincher. I'm going to try to do these once a week, maybe once a couple, every couple weeks, depending on how long editing goes for me. I'm not a great editor. I'm, I'm, I'm admitting that to you now. I'm going to do probably jump cuts. It's going to be crazy. Um, but stay tuned. Next is going to be the Afghan Hound, which is directly related to my cute little boar's way back here. Um, but thank you guys. Again, any suggestions to make this better or cooler or more interesting, please hit me up. Thanks, guys. See ya.